Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, recently I watched a movie about Malcolm X with Denzel Washington. Then I realized that I never reacted to him. Today we're gonna watch Malcolm X letter from Hajj. I personally know many people that reverted to Islam because of Malcolm X, so it is about time to finally react to him. That being said, guys, as always, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box. We have brand new merch. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. With no further ado, let's have a look. Never have I witnessed such sincere hospitality and overwhelming spirit of true brotherhood as it is practiced by the people of all colors and races here in the ancient Holy Land the home of Abraham, Muhammad, and all the other prophets of the Holy Scriptures. For the past week, I have been utterly speechless and spellbound by the graciousness I see displayed all around me by people of all colors. I have been blessed to visit the holy city of Mecca. It is very important to know that Malcolm X, coming from a Christian background, first converted to the nation of Islam, which was a black nationalistic movement. It was based upon the Quran, however, it was absolutely misconstrued, and Allah ultimately was a black man, Astaghfirullah. Back in those days, before the internet, before social media, it was, of course, hard to come by authentic information. And this is why, in prison, Malcolm X discovered the nation of Islam and started praying practicing that. However, this is how he saw Islam. He believed that it is a black man's religion. Hence, it came to his surprise when he saw all the races in Mecca. I have made my seven circuits around the Kaaba, led by a young mutawaf named Muhammad. I drank water from the well of Zamzam. I ran seven times back and forth between the hills of Mount Asafa and Marwa. I have prayed in the ancient city of Mina and I have prayed on Mount Arafah. There were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors, from blue-eyed blondes to black-skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experiences in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and the non-white. Mm. This is so important to mention, man, because nowadays, yet again, through the internet, through social media, we have this depiction of racism that comes from the states. This is not the racism that we experienced anywhere else in the world. This whole narrative about blacks versus whites, etc., etc., you name it. We never had that in Europe, for example. So now we see in Europe, in countries such as Germany or France, that certain black people take upon that American nationalistic idea of racism even though there was no segregation in Germany or in France. There was no opposition to the black people in those countries. My wife is from Senegal and she did not grow up with Hollywood movies. She knows very little about those racial conflicts in America. And therefore, once we started watching movies about the subject in America, she was shocked. She couldn't even believe that there was such a tension because she did not experience that racism in Senegal. She was going to an international school and they had kids from all over the world. She never experienced any white on black racism or vice versa. Mentioning all of this, I don't want to undermine what happened in America. However, I want to make very clear that this is an American position and Malcolm X said it himself. It was this American view that he had and he projected it onto the world. But if you look at the world, especially if you look at Islam, brotherhood is possible. America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Exactly Throughout right. my travels in the Muslim world, I have met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered white. But the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. I have never before seen sincere and true brotherhood practiced by all colors together, irrespective of their color. Yeah, yet again, this is this American position, the white attitude. We would rather say it is the Western attitude. You may be shocked by these words coming from me, but on this pilgrimage, what I have seen and experienced has forced me to rearrange much of my thought patterns previously held and to toss aside some of my previous conclusions. This was not too difficult for me. Despite my firm convictions, I have always been a man who tries to face facts and to accept the reality of life as new experience and new knowledge unfolds it. I have always kept an open mind, which is necessary to the flexibility that must go hand in hand with every form of intelligent search for truth. During the past... Yes, that open mind led him to Islam. Past 11 days here in the Muslim world, I have eaten from the same plate, drunk from the same glass and slept on the same bed or on the same rug. 
while praying to the same God with fellow Muslims whose eyes were the bluest of blue, whose hair was the blondest of blonde, and whose skin was the whitest of white. And in the words, and in the actions, and in the... It's quite interesting, he says himself that you wouldn't expect this from him, because we have to point out that Malcolm X back then was a racist. It's not only white people that can be racist. No, he was a black racist. He was even advocating for segregation. He wanted blacks to live in communities and white people to live in other communities. He wanted that separation. Moreover, they called the white man the white devil. Deeds of the white Muslims, I felt the same sincerity that I felt among the black African Muslims. Muslims of Nigeria, Sudan, and Ghana. Islam changed us all. We were truly all the same Amazing. brothers because their belief in one God had removed the white from their minds, the white from their behavior, and the white from their attitude. Hold up here. If you say that their whiteness was removed from their attitude, then you would have to admit that your blackness was removed as well. From this, that perhaps if white Americans could accept the oneness of God, then perhaps too they could accept in reality the oneness of man and cease to measure and hinder and harm others in terms of their differences in color. With racism plaguing America like an incurable cancer, the so-called Christian white American heart should be more receptive to a proven solution to such a destructive problem. Perhaps it could be in time to save America from imminent disaster, the same destruction brought upon Germany by racism that eventually destroyed the Germans themselves. Each hour here in the Holy Land. Yeah, okay, how do I say this without getting deleted by YouTube? So first and foremost, Malcolm X already passed away, so we cannot address him directly here. Nevertheless, the statements that he makes can be inverted right away. He speaks over and over again about the racism of the white man against the blacks. As I said previously, he called the white man white devil. So the racism came from both ends, and therefore, whilst talking about Islam to only address the white people and tell them that if they would adapt Islam, then the racism would be removed. How about the black community? You see nowadays as well, so much hate within the black community against white people. It goes so far that they even say that this is not even racism, right? Racism must be something systematic for it to be racism. That is of course false. And moreover, there is nothing in the American constitution that would be considered racist whatsoever. But nevertheless, if you speak about racism, white people can hate black people and black people can hate white people and Chinese people can hate black people as well. It goes into all directions. It's not that only white people are racist and therefore I understand his motivation here, I understand his background of course, but nevertheless it is not fair to only address the white people and tell them that they will be saved from their own racism. Islam came for all people and does not distinguish between race. And enables me to have greater spiritual insight into what is happening in America between black and white. The American Negro can never be blamed for his racial animosities. There you go. Only reacting never. to 400 years of the conscious racism of the American whites. Mm. But as racism leads America up the suicide path, I do believe from the experiences that I've had with them, that the whites of the younger generation in the colleges and universities will see the handwriting on the walls and many of them will turn to the spiritual path of truth. The only way left to America to ward off the disasters that racism inevitably must lead to. Never have I been so highly honored. Never have I been made to feel more humble and unworthy. Who would believe the blessings that have been heaped upon an American Negro? A few nights ago, a man who would be called in America a white man, a United Nations diplomat, an ambassador, a companion of kings, gave me his hotel suite, his bed, Never would I have even thought of dreaming that I would ever be the recipient of such honors. Honors that in America would have been bestowed upon a king, not a Negro. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Sincerely, Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz. All right, that's it for today's video. As he said in the end, and I'm paraphrasing here, the black man cannot be blamed for his animosity against the white man. And I strongly disagree with that. We all have to deal with the hatred in our heart by ourselves. Otherwise, it's just a cop out. Otherwise, it's an easy way out. Yes, it is true. There was slavery. Yes, it is true. Your ancestors have been enslaved. But if I would always look back what has happened to my ancestors. I am a Slav. The name itself tells you everything you need to know. This word originates from the Latin word sclavos, slave. 
My ancestors have been enslaved throughout Europe and beyond. Yes, we were even named slaves to this very day. The Slavs, our origins couldn't be any clearer. We were slaves. And now what? Should I be racist against everybody that enslaved my ancestors? Moreover, if you look into the Balkan, we were occupied for 500 years by the Caliphate, by the Ottoman Empire. And my ancestors and my parents and my grandparents, everybody told me that the Turks, the Muslims, were our enemies and I have to hate them. And I did. As a teenager, I hated the Muslims, I hated the Turks, I hated the Albanians. That was the reality. But at some point, I had to wake up and confront that hate within me. But here he had this beautiful spiritual experience in Mecca and his takeaway point on the surface is amazing of course. He understands that we are all brothers and sisters. He understands that we can be one people under one God but still he holds the racism within his heart and says yeah well the Negro cannot be blamed for his animosity. Of course you can. The past is the past and the present is the present. That is a loser's attitude and I refuse to be a loser. As I said, if I would have accepted the narrative and I would have accepted that hatred in myself, it would have eaten me alive and I would sit around here now in my 30s still hating everybody, blaming everybody and I wouldn't even have found Islam. That is the greatest gift and yet again, yes, I do understand the background that he is coming from and therefore again, yes, I do understand that he would talk about those subjects addressing his fellow blacks. But Islam is not about skin color. It's not about nationality. All of this has to be destroyed and diminished. The first thing that you are under God is a Muslim. Somebody that submits his will to God. You are a believer. That comes first. And I see that he had a glimpse of it writing in his letter. I saw that he had a glimpse of it in Mecca. For us as believers, it should be crystal clear that we're not taking our skin with with us into the afterlife. Our bodies go into the soil. It does not matter if you are black, if you are yellow or red or what not. It does not matter whatsoever. From Islam we know that we are only better by piety. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.